Heights of New York City, welcome to Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where we meet musicians, filmmakers, writers, dancers, and artists of all stripes who make their home in what we affectionately call Upstate Manhattan. I'm your host, Aaron Sims, and today we welcome the co-founding directors of the Creating Higher Ground Festival, Temple Camises and Pablo Francisco Rubalcaba. Higher Ground brings Northern Manhattan artists together to network and create interdisciplinary stage-based collaborations, which are produced by the festival and are presented locally during the annual HD premiere performances. Since their inaugural year in 2015, Higher Ground has brought over 150 artists together through their programming and have produced 27 premiere collaborations, presented free to the Uptown community. Additionally, they have presented over 10 new works and works in progress outside the HGF season. We are going to dive in and talk about all the great things Higher Ground has brought to the Uptown art scene. But first, uh, let's welcome Tempo and Pablo to Inwood Arts on Air. How are you guys? Good to see you. Hey, thank you for having us here. Yeah, thank you for, for having us. <laughs> thank you for basically just saying everything we were going to say. <laughs> Perfect. So roll the, roll, the, roll, the, roll the credits, folks. And that was Inwood Artworks on Air here. Uh, this is a special artist spotlight edition, and you just had it right here. Land speed record for shortest podcast ever. Information done. Well, um, you don't get off the hook that easy. Uh, so, but, but, uh, so let's start back at the, at the beginning of Higher Ground, or, or maybe the, the, the prequel to Higher Ground, if you will. Um, so, because everyone loves a good origin story. So tell me, you're both accomplished dancers in your own right, without um, reciting the entire bios for both of you, and then having its own podcast. Uh, how did you meet, and what sparked the collaboration to bring this together? We actually met at a Limon Gala. As you know, Pablo um, was a principal at Limon for 20 years. Oh, I don't, you were with Limon 20 years. Yeah, I was with the Jose Limon Dance Company for 20 years. And essentially danced every principal role. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I was fortunate enough to do a lot of Jose's own roles. So I did the Morris Pavan, I, I did the Outsider, all of those things. And uh, we were having one of our galas mm -hmm. when Ms. Camise is here. Uh, I came with uh, one of my friends, and that's where we met, and we became friends. And then we always take classes together and knew each other from the community, the dance community. Um, yeah, and then I got a crazy idea. <laughs> so, actually, the, 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 actually, the story is cool about needing a partner and then yeah. finding somebody right in front of you. So, me. actually, here's an A train story. Um, I was on the A train, 59th to 175th at the time in desperate need of finding a dance partner because my other one could not commit to the date, could not do it. And it was like, time is of the essence. We have to figure this out. So I'm sitting there on the entire ride up, like, okay, who can I think of in my like, group of dancers? Who can I think of? Who can I think of? And couldn't think of anyone. I was getting really stressed. And then right before, actually right at 175th, I was going to 181st, I look, I turn to the left and look, and there's Mr. Lloyd Knight sitting there. <laughs> He's a, a soloist, a, a principal dancer with the Martha Graham Company. And a friend and colleague, and I was like, Lloyd, <laughs> what are you doing on this date? Can you do this pot of dough with me? It's with Henning Ribsom. And he was like, oh, I worked with Henning. And, oh, yeah, I, I'm on tour, but I can get back, and there's time. And so that worked out. I was like, and then it was, I was just like, you know, there's amazing artists up here. Washington Heights and Inwood at the time was their original concept. And I was like, this should be celebrated more. Like, if we all come together, we can create amazing art and um, just share it with community. But it was from that, like, small moment of just a train. <laughs> yeah, that's the basic origin. And then she, she approached me with this idea, and I thought it was amazing. And then we, we really came to realize that, and as you know, a huge percentage of, of active artists in the city of New York live up here. And we all kind of travel south to do our thing. Um, so we realized that there is a massive number of artists that are at a very high caliber that live up here. And that, I mean, I did not know that Lloyd lived up here, which means that I don't know that a lot of people that I work with live up here. And so we thought, 
wouldn't it be fantastic if we brought these people together to network, mm -hmm. to get to know the neighborhood, to collaborate amongst themselves, and then we can present what they come up with. So our whole mission is to create, to kind of bring together people uptown, have them meet, collaborate, network, and create up here and also perform it up here where, you know, there aren't that many theaters, there aren't that many uh, opportunities for, for the public to see. Yeah, you get the feeling this wouldn't quite work in, like, Dubuque, Iowa, or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Nothing against the, peop the good people at Dubuque. <laughs> but, uh, but to your point, though, it's like, I think there is um, such a bastion of talent mm -hmm. here. And, yeah, you'll, <laughs> you'll be on the subway late at night, or at least you were in pre-pandemic times, yeah. and yeah. saying, oh, isn't that so-and-so from that show? Mm -hmm. I didn't know they lived up here, or yeah. whatever it is. And uh, they go up at the same stop, and they go to a building near your building, or, or in the same building, for instance. Sure. It's pretty amazing how, um, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Pablo. I, like, it deserves to be celebrated how ridiculously talented people in this community. And I'll further uh, champion your sentiment about you know a placemaking up here, and that mm -hmm. there is no, um, dance hall proper, there is no theater, there is no, um, there's not even a classroom to take dance up here, let alone uh, re rehearsal so much. I mean, uh, well, I yeah. will say, you're right, you're right. A dance project of Washington Heights, for sure, uh, mm -hmm. does a lot. And there's, um, a, there's a couple more that I've, just from my research, oh, yeah? because we do donated, um, like we asked for donated space from the community, so I've constantly been like just so you're unearthing them. Yeah. Very we're, good. yeah, we're we're digging them up. We're digging them up. Yeah. Well, I think it's fantastic what you're doing. And um, since 12, so it's been since 2015, right? Is yes. when it began. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, you know, you focus on presenting. I'm going to pull this out, quoting interdisciplinary stage-based collaborations locally mm -hmm. here in North Manhattan. So can you interpret for our listeners what that means? So I go back to the ballet russe concept, <laughs> another <laughs> basic idea of higher ground, which is it's not just the ballet, you know. And higher ground is actually not just dance space. It's just we receive a lot of dance. But I've always loved the idea of the ballet russe with with balance sheen doing the creating the choreography. Then you have Stravinsky with this incredible music. And you have Chanel doing the costumes. And um, did Picasso do? No. Yeah, yeah, Picasso yeah, did yeah, some yeah. costumes. Yeah, or, yeah. But you know, like just these incredible minds coming together to create a stage based collaboration. Um, and so that's where Higher Ground also wanted to pull from. And also to make artists think outside the box of their own talent, their own discipline and really kind of push their creative concepts. Like um, with Blank Space is a perfect example by Julia Beckson. You were in it yourself um, as um, the opening actor, I, yeah. president, I think, uh, um, political leader. Authoritarian, if Authoritarian you will. <laughs> Dictator, whatever. whatever. Um, Tyrant. Whatever, <laughs> there you go. But, whatever Julia said it was. You know, <laughs> seldom do you see um, a work that is Ballet heavy, but with narration. Yeah. You know, with talking, um, except if you're in the old musicals, right? Mm -hmm. um, and with incredible visual art. Um, the costumes were done by Laura Miller. Um, the writing was done by Samara. I'm not going to think of her name right now. I'm going to cry about it later. But it was a beautiful higher ground collaboration, you know, just because of the push, you know, how can these artists contribute and made it very unique because it was a creative um, experiment. Yeah. Well, and adding to that, the, the concept of stage-based, which is something that we mm -hmm. kind of um, came up with together, <clears throat> is distinct because it is to be performative which was really interesting at the very beginning because we had a lot of people come to us and say, I am a visual artist, or I am a, a weaver. We've had somebody mm -hmm. doing 
weaving or uh, I'm, I'm not somebody that does performing. And that was exciting because the point is to utilize each craft in a way, have the artist maybe conceptualize the, the niche of their work in, in a way that would maybe extend into a slightly other realm. So we blur, we blur the line between the different disciplines mm -hmm. with the product being something that we can present. And we've had beautiful work. What, what was the work with, um, uh, with Rachel and Uniqua? Um, ooh, they're doing that to me right now. Yeah, we've had a lot of pieces, but. It's something about journey or something. The else. description was that somebody read a poem while playing a guitar to the poem, at the same time, we had a visual artist painting the impressions roots. of what she was, was it Roots? Roots. It might be Roots, of what she was listening to. It's Roots. So, so, you, so the audience could see the process of creation through the process of inspiration simultaneously, which is something that they're not really that privy to. You know, you tend to see the result. So you tend to see a painting that's done, and you don't really know what where it, it, it is it sprung from. And you, you, you see a, a, a person with a guitar telling a story. And it's just a story, and it might process the way that it processes to you, but to see it kind of influence another form, I thought that was a very successful. And to watch a visual artist work on a time crunch. Yeah. It was Rachel Blackman, wasn't it? So it was. Rachel Blackman. Rachel Blackman. Uh -huh. And Unique Simmons. And Uniqua would practice that painting a few times to get her timing down to complete it in time with um, Rachel's performance. Well, I think it's fast. I think I think as well. I think the process is fascinating and and welcoming people into that. And I think it should. Well, we'll find out. But you know, every every diff every different performance is unique into itself. Mm -hmm. So and how it informs. So some people are really into that. Some people just want to see the end of the thing, and they just want to see a painting. Which is totally fine too, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's really interesting. I just wanted to point out to people who perhaps are discovering your work now on this podcast is that um, you know there isn't per se a professionally proper. I put that in quotations, whatever that means. Dance company and an uptown dance company. It's like this is what we do. We do dance. That's it. And uh, and part of that is venue oriented and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but that's a whole different conversation. But I, the point is that you know you both come from this uh, professional dance background, and yet you chose to to, to take this methodology of uh, of bringing together uh, disparate art forms and to trying to create something that perhaps doesn't have a map to it. Mm -hmm. That perhaps um, you have an idea, you have you know this is how we're going to do things, but it's great not knowing the end result. Mm -hmm. and, and, and being okay with that and, and, and being, as you just said, uh, amazed by, by what you come up with. Mm -hmm. Well, we also think of, um, especially I think coming from the dance world where so many times, you know, you have a choreographer that has a concept and just pulls music from the archives of, you know, Spotify or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but is still in a way incomplete to their vision because they're kind of choosing music that, okay, this will work, right? It's as locked opposed, in. It's, it's, yeah. it's tried and true. Yeah, yeah, but as opposed to something that they're actually really feeling will create the piece and the identity of the piece. Um, same with like costumes, you know, okay, well this leotard skirt, this will work, but it's not true or to the piece completely, you know, it's just kind of added at because they don't have another option. Um, so we, I mean, we as Higher Ground, we feel each artist is a missing puzzled piece to a collaboration that gives it a very true, unique identity. And that's another part of it, is giving these artists a chance to really fulfill their vision of a collaboration without being like, okay, we'll just use this, or we'll just do, you know. So that's when, like, we, when we have full, like, costumes created by music created a new composition all of this it's just like goosebumps <laughs> for us well it's also um yeah and to continue that thought there are also processes in which um well i was fortunate enough to work with with choreographers that did have music commissioned for their work 
And at the end, the, as you say, the, the, the audience will see a product. But I was, I was always fascinated by the process. So, you know, having a piece made for a piece of dance or having some music created for a piece of dance, or even vice versa, which is we have had the mm -hmm. process where the dance, kind of the choreographer, kind of guides the conductor along. Uh, it seems to me that they have equal value and they should be respected equally. Uh, same with, with costume designs that are made mm -hmm. for this vision. So each piece that you see on a stage is the product of so many voices coming together. And I'm always very interested in A, the process of collaboration, and B, the idea of giving proper credit to all creators. Because, you know, you see a ballet and a lot of people will just see the dance and be very moved by the dance, maybe the music. But it's hard to know, like, what the technician does. It's hard to know, like, what the shoemaker does because some dancers have their shoes, like, made for them. You know, it's hard to know how many puzzle pieces mm -hmm. have made this photograph. So um, our mission is to try to bring as many of these people together and give them their credit. You Which know? also lends itself to the community building aspect and the networking yeah. of higher ground because people get stuck in their, oh, I'm a dancer or a musician or, you know, their community of artists, which of course you will, you know, if you're working with them day in, day out. And they don't get to reach into other pools of art of people. And that's where higher ground has I think we have actually achieved that mission of really creating a network of all artists for people to pull from, to be like, oh, I want a composer. Oh, wait, Higher Ground knows, here's some composers yeah. I met, or a visual artist, or... Or an and... alto saxophone player, or whatever, <laughs> like a random thing. I'm still looking for a balloon artist. Yeah. Since 2015, I've been looking for a balloon artist to do What's sets. It? Well, you know that, folks? Piece. You know where to go. If you're a balloon <laughs> artist out there, yeah. so. Pablo is patiently waiting. <laughs> I mean, we had a, ma a magician. Yeah. And that was the fantastic. First year. That's pretty cool. Harry yeah. Mendel. Oh, I know. Oh, I know Harry. Yeah, yeah, yeah Harry's great. great. Yeah. Um, so, switching slightly from the processes on stage to the processes off stage, uh, on the business side of things, um, I think it's really interesting that people know, how, as you're saying, what goes into actually putting it together. So people don't get to see what goes into the actual enabling yeah. the people to create. So there's a whole back layer. Yelling at a computer. Well, <laughs> in short. But please, do speak to how you operate. The, I think it's great to give people, particularly for those who generated who have their own self-generative ideas for companies and want to collaborate. Uh, I think it's always interesting to hear about um, the process of, so how do you operate the festival to keep it move, move it forward? And also um, why you chose the model you did and maybe if you, a little bit of a balance sheet to use part of the financial term of like, where are you now with it? How, do you think, has it served you well? Do you, would you do something slightly different um, and, and maybe where you're looking to go forward with it. I'll let you go on this one. All right. Um, well, there's a lot of questions in your question. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and so we, we, can look at, uh, we can look at it as um, from a financial point of view. So the, the, the festival operates actually on a, on a kind of a shoestring budget. Mm -hmm. we, we have been fortunate enough to uh, run a few, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, Social campaigns, campaign, um, crowdfunding, yeah, means that have been Crowd successful. Source. We have had, uh, you know, beautiful grants that really great come through grants from from various organizations in the city, and uh, you know, healthy uh, healthy contributions from. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're always looking for more. Well, we are always <laughs> looking for more. And Temple, where could they go? <laughs> CreatingHigherGround.com. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please, CreatingHigherGround.com. Go to the donation page, anything will help. But to that end, uh, one, of, one, of the things, one of the things that we do is we actually pay the artists. What a concept. Artists and, are entrepreneurs yeah, and merchants. And, and, we pay the projects, projects we, well, stipend. Yeah, we, we, we 
give each one of our collaborations a small stipend, mm -hmm. which I, I realize that, especially in dance, if you want to get your work seen and you want to be part of a festival, many times you actually have to pay to be in the festival. And this is something that is kind of different to that structure. However, there is a difference between the festival that you pay for and the festival that you get money for. We're, we're asking for an entirely original and collaborative work. Most festivals, what they say is, wow, I really like that piece you did about chili dogs and rain. That was my favorite one, actually. That, that was awesome. Uh, and I would like to put that in my festival. Would you, would you consider coming in? The piece is completed. It's brought on. We say, I really like the body of your work. I really, uh, we really are convinced by the vision that you presented to us as a collaboration. So then we would like to fund and produce that. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know ultimately what we're going to get. So it's always kind of a dice. Well, we check in. Well, in. yeah, but, but the thing is that. In the end, yeah. The thing is yeah. that it's a completely new thing. So, um, You're not the artistic director of the experience, the artists are themselves. Yes, mm -hmm. we, we give the artists as much freedom as, as we can. Of course, we will monitor certain things. It is a, uh, it is a free and family-friendly event. So, you know, there are certain... There's guidelines. Guidelines, thank oh, yeah. you. That's the right, <laughs> that's the right. And um, so for that, we are involved in that way. But our purpose is to give the artists as much respect as much freedom and as much ownership of their work as possible. So that, that is how we handle that side of it. Uh, we produce once a, once a year. Once a year, with, we try to add extra um, side opportunities for artists. Yes. Also, once, like here and there, um, like when United House is doing the lobby series, we love that to give opportunity to artists additionally from higher ground. But our big festival is once a year. Once a year. Now, the the intellectual property is the artist, which means that they have the freedom to go and produce and grow and put which this piece love in other places. Huh? Which we love seeing. Yeah, which is fantastic. That's the purpose. Now, they own their work. We don't own it. We only request that they put, you know, first premiered at higher ground such a year, such a year. So we don't take anything from them. We give them as much as we can. And whenever they a project grows and presents somewhere else, we're very proud of it. Mm -hmm. Because it means that we've achieved part of our mission. Now, there is another part to your question, which is socially how, what is the infrastructure? And for that, I will take it to Tempo, and she will talk about our meet and greets. <laughs> oh, meet and greets, is that part of it? Like, um, our meet and greets are, at the beginning of the year, we do artist meet and greets. So this is um, the networking part of the. Mm -hmm. And that is held at different um, locations, different establishments throughout the northern Manhattan area. So 181 Cabrini, um, whom else on the top, off the top of my head? The Kayla. Um, hmm? Who? Uh, the wine bar. Tanat, Tanat, which is sadly closing. So, but several, like we try to spread it from Harlem to up to northern Manhattan, up to Inwood, you know. And we give them opportunity to, the artist opportunity to meet, also to connect with the community, to with the neighborhoods, and see these new establishments maybe to them, and give them a little money, business, interest. Um, this year, or the last two years, because of COVID, we've done Zoom uh, meet and greets, however, which the artists loved because it was more yeah. intimate. I did, it was speed dating for artists. Yeah. We broke <laughs> but, them up into rooms and only had 15 minutes, and then yeah. we had them mix up again. Um, but we did still bring in local businesses to offer discounts for delivery to help their um, get more business. Or um, Booney was awesome, yeah. giving a talking about their performance opportunity. Um, yeah, I mean, are we answering your question? Uh, are you? <laughs> 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 well, I mean, listen, no, I, I, as I said before to you, there is no wrong answers. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's, just, it's just like, listen, it's about, um, you know, you're talking, yes, you are. You're talking about the goings on and, you know, you, in, a, in a broad way, 
not the Broadway, but broad, a broader <laughs> sense of Broadway. Yeah, no jazz hands here, <laughs> um, or, or, or save it for the show. But, um, but you're saying, with, no, you're talking about infrastructure in a sense of programming infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And saying, like, you're setting the table for, um, you know, you're building community, as you said, Temple, before, as, like, uh, I call it like engagement. Mm -hmm. You're doing enga community engagement events that will feed into, you know, possible collaborations that will hopefully maybe come to fruition for the festival, mm -hmm. maybe. And spark some but how we get it done That's exactly is right. ripping out hair, uh, yelling at the computer. Yelling I got to tell y'all, you know, I love the collaboration aspect of it. I can tell you that over and over. But when you have to credit all the artists for a collaboration on each social media post. <laughs> oh, Admin's Lordy. tough. Admin is tough. It really is. People have people, and that's thanks for. I think you put the, the dot on the on the, the end of the sentence here with the question because it is. It's a labor of love, and if you think Temple and Pablo are getting rich off this, you're sadly wrong. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of passion that goes into it um, from uh, being founders. Mm -hmm. uh, it, usually, there is a you know an emotional manifesto that comes with. Uh, creating something, and um, and I think that's why it's very interesting uh, that you share your experience with people uh, coming as artists first. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't come through like you know the Wharton School of Business and then decide, mm -hmm. you know what? I think it'd be great to do something with dancers and actors and and magicians will, and, and balloon people. I will say, you know, I was an event manager for nine years, and that's really what gave me the confidence to move forward into being a co-founder of a festival because I had to organize a lot of big events, catering, this and that. So, um, but I also would have to organize um, our restaurant's particip participation in um, fundraising events, like the big, you know, um, was Autism Speaks and all these that are do great work for these organizations and celebrity chefs come in and the restaurants donate 500 portions or whatnot. But by being just like a little person in the big um, architecture of those events, I saw, okay, yeah, there may be one person involved or in charge, but they're trickling down all these tasks, and that's what makes an event happen. It doesn't have to all be on you. You know, you get help, you get people to organize and make the event possible. One event is a bunch of people contributing. Oh. I think you've done a good job of, of attracting people because it's been an annual festival, uh, mm -hmm. virtually um, this year and mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. And um, who wants to tell the story about uh, being a virtual festival this year and then maybe not virtual for one performance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was actually that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we are lucky enough to have a performance space that is quite beautiful. And that is Temple's own terrace. Um, and we have a beautiful view of the river, and it's a great mm -hmm. framing. And if you go to our, um, I guess our Broadcasting channel, spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll see last year's and some of this year's, and you'll see the outside. It's, it's mm -hmm. quite lovely. So um, for the pandemic, my fiance, Derek Rosenbeck, and I created Arts on Air, which live streamed, we called ourselves the Speakeasy Lincoln Center of Washington Heights. Um, but we, he taught himself how to broadcast, how to live stream. And so when Higher Ground needed to go virtual, it was just the natural um, thing to do. <laughs> but So we did go virtual. Um, but then because it's outdoor, it's a terrace, there's always threat of rain. Yeah. And for Flutie Loops this year, there was major threat of rain until I said, Okay, let's change it. Let's go. And then it kind of dissipated. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and well, what happened was that um, Booney Coffee had uh, very graciously opened their doors to artists, and they have a um, they have a small stage. And it happened. The Fruit Loops is a collaboration of, I guess it's spoken word no, and no, it's flute and um, oh, electronic, flute and electronic music, yeah. and it is actually our first solely music collaboration. Yeah. Wow. So Which we've never had. it happened that the day that we were very threatened by this hurricanic weather, uh, we were not willing to produce outside. 
because as you know, if you get this stuff wet, that's it. Especially like the flutes, the electronic, like, um, yeah. Neil is, um, Zara Lawler, I'm sorry, Zara, you know it's going to happen forever. Lawler? Lawler, I can't yeah. do it. Southern. <laughs> and Neil Rolnick, and he has this big computer set up, you know, and one drop, and... I know very well. <laughs> so um, so we, we set it up at Cafe Buni, um, Buni and it, it was, was fantastic. We had our, our virtual on-site <laughs> Not outside, but indoors, and that is something that is very compelling to me. Mm -hmm. so Congrats on something. being able to, again, I, I, I thought it was a perfect segue to ask the question coming from the management side of things of like, <laughs> you think it's easy, so you want to be a producer, kid, you think it's easy, <laughs> and it is tough, you're yelling at the computer, and then you're yelling at the radar, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, you, and then you make a call. Or weather you Channel or you and AccuWeather, because they're yeah. never the same. They're never the same. <laughs> Try weather.org if you can sometime. But, uh, Anyway, um, but I, I think there's so much that goes into presenting mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, but I will say this: in the, on the positive end of things, it was your first in-person show in two years. Yeah. So yeah. at least it gave you that on the on the on the sunny side to weather. To yeah, and a big shout out to Booney for having an incredible setup. They're they're well set. All you artists ready to perform, reach out to them. Their setup, their stage, is beautifully done. Yep. And. Derek for figuring it all out in the live stream because there was some to make the sound work, especially for Neil's work, um, and to be able to capture live stream was a, a big scratch on the head at yeah. that moment. Well, I, I think it's fantastic. And um, and just uh, going back to what you said earlier, and then also with this too, um, you've had about, I don't know, between five and seven collaborations a year, I think, between your mm -hmm. different yes. festivals. Um, are there any particular collaboration creations that have come out of the festival that have gone on to have different lives? Um, yes. Uh, I know Julia is very active in um, progressing her work. Um, Blank Space went on to do performances. And then the Giving Tree piece, what is that called? Um, it, was a, it was our first, was it our second year, right? In 2016. Don't do this to me. <laughs> but, you can say yes. Yes. <laughs> and the, was, and the, the, the what issues, grows on trees. What grows on trees. And that piece was based <laughs> on the giving tree. And mm -hmm. it had um, shadow, shadow play. puppetry. Shadow, shadow play. play. Which was very hard to do. And we learned very quickly that you can't do shadow play during a daytime performance. No, you so can't we, do that. We, have, we have been learning yeah, as we progress. Sure. But that piece had several manifestations and she grew it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is kind of our point. We've had dancers that connect with choreographers and are still mm -hmm. part of their dance company. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, Which yes. always is great. That's awesome. Um, we've also had artists who met one higher ground season and then and they didn't work together, but then came back the following year. It was like, hey, no, I actually, you were really intriguing. I want to work with you. I'm, I'm sorry I can't think of off the top of my head what other pieces have gone on. I think Sphinx Dances did. I mean, several have. I just, unfortunately, off the top of my head, can't think of it. That's all right. So <laughs> at the Tire Ground website, I'm sure they'll put things up there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's all there. We do. Go to, our, go to Facebook on that, because we always try to display when a Higher Ground, H, or we call it HG Premiere, mm -hmm. is being performed for another time. Cool. Um, uh, and to put a button on the digital aspect of it all, um, or maybe not. Uh, do you foresee the festival staying digital in some respect? With, uh, I mean, it, I know we're still in the thick of it with Delta variants coming up, and people are now saying whatever normal means won't exist until spring of 2022 in some mm -hmm. respects when it comes to uh, presenting live performance. So I was just curious what your thoughts are and, and what you've learned through the digital world with with everything and seeing if you would want to keep that as a part of higher ground in some way. We've been discussing it. I think the, the hard part about this is when we go back to parks, which we will do, um, is figuring out the Wi-Fi, the internet connection to do a, a, a successful live stream because it takes a lot, as you probably know. And so is getting the technology and um, investing in that technology to make it possible or bringing in someone who has the equipment and then we rent for a day. But it's just 
you know, you can't just hop onto any Wi-Fi, you know, to live stream, connect right with that Ethernet cable. You need a dedicated line, dedicated yeah. Bandwidth. Yeah. But we, CRM we, has to be yours. Yes. We would have to invest in the right technology to do that. Yeah. Um, but the, the notion is that we do want to go back to a live performance and at the same time be able to live stream it mm -hmm. to reach even more people. Uh, the, the issue is that we, we do performances for free, open to the public in, well, up until now, Fort Ryan Park at and Loftus Playground. So it's for everybody and families. We have a lot of families that come and, are, and we're starting to have a, a fan base that mm -hmm. comes for the festival, which is always great. Um, so what, we're, what the challenges that we faced this year, say, talking about like, the variants, was the fact that because you're doing a live festival, you still need changing rooms. And we do have these big tents that we utilize, but of course that has people in close contact. So that was one of the considerations that kind of led us to doing a digital festival again this year. Um, Parks and Recreations, their protocol, you know, had certain things and that was shifting, that were shifting throughout the year. And because we need to give up, because again, the work that we present is completely original, we must give our artists time to create. So it was hard for us to wait to see if by any chance on such a date it was okay for. So um, we're hoping that 2022 will let us kind of com come back to some sort of normality. But we've learned that keeping it digital is also great because we can reach people outside the community. And, uh, and there's more planning around that. Well, yeah. I think you're doing great work and I hope more people find your work. And um, I just want to thank you both for taking the time to be, as, be with us here today. And, and could you tell people where to go to find your work? You can go to creatinghigherground.com as our website, Higher Ground Festival on Facebook, Higher Ground NYC on Instagram, and our YouTube, I believe, is Higher Ground NYC. Well. Yeah. And also Arts, Arts on Air. And Arts on Air. Um, YouTube Arts on Air NYC for the 2021 festival right now. Very good. So. Well, again, listeners, uh, you can find um, some links in our description of this episode. Uh, oh, because when this is going to air next week, maybe? That's the idea. Know. I don't want to pin it on you. That's the idea. But our campaign to raise money for the 2021-2022 festival is happening now. You can go to our Facebook page. You can go to our website, our Instagram and donate it in September 10th. Very good. Anything, anything will help. Because yeah. they, uh, they are a charity, yes? Yeah. Yes. Public charity. So that means tax-exempt donations for mm -hmm. your taxes this year. So keep that in mind when you and give and give healthily to them. Yeah. So uh, thanks again, Temple and Pablo, for Thank being here. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sure thing. Thank you so much. And uh, this is In What Artworks On Air. It's where we meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, dancers, and artists of all stripes that make their home here in Upper Manhattan. If you have a moment, please show us some love right now and rate and re uh, review this podcast, the Apple Podcast, that really does help. Uh, many thanks to Hudson View Gardens here for hosting us and to HyattSites.com for uptown promotional support. Be sure to follow us on social media at Inwood Artworks on all our social channels to keep up with what we do, which includes the Inwood Film Festival, Filmworks Self Resto, Filmworks Self Fresco, Up of Art Galleries, Live Performances, and so much more. You can support On Air and all of our programming by heading over to InwoodArtworks.nyc and making a tax free donation. Uh, thank you so much. At InwoodArtworks.nyc backslash donate. This program is supported in part by public funds, New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, in partnership with City Council. From the top of Manhattan and the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Aaron Sims for In What Artworks On Air. <laughs>